Welcome to uh, HCS. Um, HCS is a leading edge strategy and tactics for digital lead generation marketing. And I want to thank everybody in attendance today. So we're, today we're going to be talking about one of the presentations that we've done in the past, which is called Cracking the Code. We're very excited to talk to you about it. It talks about uh, the dilemmas that are facing uh, sales and business development people as well as uh, marketers trying to go ahead and reach the actual decision makers. So uh, we'll kind of jump in and we thought we'd start out by uh, giving you a little information about who we are. So let me tell you a little bit about HCS. So HCS uh, started as a retail consulting firm, but we've really expanded beyond that. And we look a lot more like a digital marketing firm that helps companies grow. Uh, we capture everything under one roof and are able to accelerate your brand and create access including uh, access to you know uh, data or big data that can help you drive your programs and reach more people more effectively so uh, we also many times function as uh, you kind of the glue between a, a non-existent uh, marketing department and uh, a group that might want to be building a marketing department. And so a lot of times we work as an interim marketing um, group to support your needs and try to help you grow your business. There's a couple things that we thought we uh, should talk about and we should talk about it in, uh, in depth, which is about what we believe in. And what we believe in um, are the following items. We believe the B2B journey has changed forever and it's not going back. And you, marketers and sales and business developers need to adapt to the current market conditions. A couple other things we believe that uh, solution selling, which has been predominantly in the marketplace, is leads to commoditization of your offer. And um, we are much more focused towards trying to help you differentiate your brand rather than commoditize your brand. Uh, there's more information available today about your business or your services that you offer as well as the people that buy them and that's the reference of big data that we keep talking about which is how do you go ahead and prospect in today's world so uh, we also believe that marketing plays a much larger role than ever before and um, that role has evolved to more of a handshake and a partnership where marketing many times will determine and start the process and then it'll be followed up by uh, the aspect of uh, the, you know, identifying, you know, how that transfers to a sales or business developer to take it to the next threshold. Um, every business that we've uh, been able to be in contact for over the last five years really does have its own unique DNA. And one of the things that we get really excited about is learning about new businesses and learning about what differentiates you. Uh, trying to articulate that message, uh, doing that internally can be extremely difficult and it gives you a very um, myopic point of view. Uh, that's why a lot of companies uh, like to have us uh, take a look at your business and try to articulate what makes you different. Uh, we also believe that a lot of different vertical industries, especially like retail, have their own cultural fluency and that that talks about the language that's used. It's an understanding. It's, it's a, a perceived notion that you get them and uh, we believe in that and that's what we believe a lot of uh, vendor interviews are trying to obtain we also believe that uh, you know people don't hire generalists any longer they hire specialists so but at the end of the day we believe everything is about implementation and so what you're looking at right now is kind of our 360 degree view of what it takes in today's world to adequately um, manage a business development group and um, that starts with discovery, moves all the way through kind of keyword and, you know, uh, a competitive assessment, moving into web intelligence and looking at that conversion point uh, and also understanding how nurturing plays in, in the role and the tools that are necessary be, beyond just a business card to go ahead and to proceed and um, grow a relationship. And then um, how you start to see who's listening through email campaigning and storytelling in one to many, which we believe in a lot on video. And then um, you start to generate leads and you start to uh, start to develop presentations. And at the end of the day, you start to move the ball down the, the field. 
So today we're here to talk about cracking the code. I love talking about this. This is a presentation we've done multiple times. But the dynamics of today's world have really changed on that business development model. And I think a lot of people um, are confused by what goes into it. So uh, we pulled a few things about our, our points of view. Our process is not just a philosophical. Uh, ours leads to tactical and strategic changes inside your company. And so what we're proposing to you is that you need to go ahead and be able to uh, address some change in your business to, to change the way, the outcome that you're looking to uh, obtain. Um, we are experienced and influenced by trends and the constant change through technology and visual communication processes that produce graphic print and dimensional solutions. We really think that this has really evolved. And we also believe that our that um, moving forward uh, on just a manufacturing focus, you have to convert your business to more of a service focus, which would really talk to you know a lot of different options around how you would go ahead and be able to best serve your customers. And it has to be a message that articulates a service and a manufacturing uh, proficiency. So uh, the research that we've uh, shown is that what happens in today's world because of the abundance availability of data and information about the services that we uh, produce in the graphic communication industry is um, we have to change that B2B experience. And so one of the things that we see consistently is that um, there's a lot of people that are not getting the effects that they want, but they haven't changed their process to engage the client. Um, what we hear on a consistent basis is that uh, the first third of the engagement, people want to look at you from afar and on your public face, which is your web presence and any of your social links, to determine whether uh, you could make that shortcut. So that process has really changed, and it's really hard to break down through those walls of uh, voicemail. And so what we're seeing right now is what used to be uh, a model that we used to use or, uh, in my past life about 10 steps to a seat at the table and how those conversion points would lead has completely changed. And so uh, if you're still going to business or doing business development based on this model, what you're going to find is that your success ratio is going down considerably. What we see more likely is that there has to be a lot more transparency to people that are seeking you or seeking the services that you offer. And they want to have much more transparency to this. We also find that that research is usually done by um, not the final decision maker, but what we like to refer to as an actor uh, that person and that actor oftentimes looks like a millennial and um, they're extremely good researchers and they're able to go ahead and um, find and create shortcut, short lists of people that they think are applicable. But keep in mind on this, when they're searching for our, uh, the services that we all provide, they're wanting to go ahead and have an expectation of a lot of transparency and they're trying to make sure that it's not salesy environment, but it's an educational one. And so what happens is that you uh, spend a lot of time trying to go ahead and they'll look at you from afar and then determine whether you'll make a short list. Um, there's multiple stages to this buying engagement, but that first third of the engagement is, is really about just being found and, and being identified as somebody that's an expert inside a space. In today's world, uh, that millennial doesn't want to hire a generalist that has a lot of knowledge in a lot of areas. They want to hire a specialist because there's, they have such access uh, to information and they're very determined to find somebody that just is perfect for the task. And what happens after you've made it through that first third of the engagement, which many times you don't even know is going on, um, in that last two thirds of the engagement, they will start to reach out and start to create it's an interaction and in uh, you know probably a third of that engagement at the end of it looks a lot like what you and I have uh, probably been used to in our past performances uh, doing business development. So uh, that researcher role again is what we talk about. This is uh, you know they are very focused on uh, are motivated about executing on the assignment they've been giving. They're uh, trying to save money and time. Uh, they were looking for improving uh, uh, products and services, and they're solving uh, existing problems. So 
you know, they uh, they are not necessarily uh, fully informed and they're not the final decision maker. And in that last third, you finally go through this process once again and you go through it with the final decision maker. So what this does is this increases the, the uh, prospecting and lead time. It also increases the engagement formula so that there has to be a lot more information that can share you can share with them um, and offer transparency to your customer base and um, really prove that you're an expert in this marketplace. So the question you got to ask yourself is, do you have a selling strategy? And if so, what is that selling strategy? And does it have different stages? So um, is your plan working if you have one? A lot of the companies that we visited in the last year uh, really have really been trading the same way and trying to do business development just as they've done it for the last 15 or 20 years. Um, one of the things that we believe in is the notion that selling is dead and education is here to stay. And what that really means to you as someone offering services that you have to have a very clear idea of how to educate your customers about what you do and how to differentiate your offering from your competition. And so you have to do that in a less salesy way and more of an educational way. Um, we also believe that there's a ton more content that's required. And, you know, content marketing has become um, really the baseline of how to stay in touch and break through this, you know, one third, two third selling engagement. And you have to, in many cases, automate those touch points. But at the end of the day, in order to automate those touch points and stay top of mind, what will occur is that you have a lot of content that you're going to have to produce. And this could be content that is outbound, social, it could be search, it has to be themed. And um, a lot of companies just don't have the bandwidth to put that together. One of the things we offer is a content marketing um, strategy and checklist that talks you through how to go ahead and start to build those things. So uh, we believe content is the new capital in the marketing engagements for today. So uh, is your business a specialist or a generalist? You need to take a deep look at this and um, understand that uh, what this difference will, how this will lead to your success. So um, the other area that we think is critical here is really about big data. Uh, so big data is, is about, you know, there's more ways to prospect than ever before. And it also is there's more data about the services we offer. And it, it doesn't require them doing a tremendous amount of searching to find it. So uh, we believe in a formula of data mining, and that's being able to start with some knowns of who we want to talk to from a region, uh, from an entry point, from maybe even a sit code basis that we want to go ahead and find customers like we already have, but in a broader reach. And a lot of companies have been built on one strategic account, but those strategic accounts can't yet be replicated. Data mining is really the way that you do that. And it allows you to do a broader search and expand even if you really feel your, your company is more regional. So um, the key thing about data mining is determining right from the beginning the personas of the users that you want to use as your entry points. Um, I'm sharing with you a, a few entry points and titles. Those are key when you're going through a data mining exercise. So it really depends on what type of business that you're, you're an expert on and what those entry points might be. These are just an example of some of the, uh, the items that uh, you could reach. And again, we'll be distributing this, uh, some notes from this uh, presentation so that you can take it forward. So again, remember we talked about there's 10 steps to a seat at the table. Well, we really believe that's really been uh, shaken up and almost the first three steps now can be replaced with data mining. Um, and even to the fact, a lot of companies ask us, well, how do we get into this game? Well, what we do, what we suggest is that you've, almost every company we've visited in the last five years has an 80-20 rule, which is 80% of their revenues come from 20% of their sellers. And uh, you have to do a, a really hard evaluation and you can fund your change by having fewer sellers and more marketing. And that marketing allows you to go ahead and increase your reach and frequency. It also helps you with your retention because you're providing more leads and leads are something that really haven't really um, populated in, uh, in a lot of uh, graphic communication companies. 
So in the past, uh, we there used to be a correlation to more salespeople with increased sales. We don't believe that anymore. We think there's a direct correlation to um, more marketing, which relates to uh, an increase in sales. So what you what people are looking for is they're looking for experts because in our belief, they've got 30% more work with 30% less people to do it. And what they're looking for is people that can pick up the ball and be fully informed because they're uh, industry vertical specialists. And if you can represent that to your customers, they will see a real value in that. So um, many people in the past, uh, from a sales perspective, have been hired for their contacts. And we don't believe that that's a relevant choice to, to hire a salesperson. Um, because you can data mine and create data contacts that um, really can get you in the same place as long as you are an industry expert. So the other part that we always like to talk about when we're talking about the formula for cracking the code and rethink the formula is centralizing your data. I can't tell you how many companies that we visit annually that don't have a centralized data solution. And that could be just a, a fully active maintained uh, spreadsheet that's centrally shared with everyone, or um, a better choice would be to use some sort of CRM that allows you to get complete visibility and that's constantly activated and updated. So uh, for us, we think you need to rethink that formula and buy back your company information um, from your salespeople and business developers and centralize that because that really is the, the, the enterprise value of your business. Um, and many of these people that have CRMs don't really have them utilized by their teams. So it, it, it really becomes mandatory in today's world and as fast as uh, positions are changing out there with our, our clients and prospects that those CRMs have to be maintained and updated. So the other thing to think about is also to develop a, a lead scoring process and also developing nurturing plans. Merch, merch, uh, nurturing plans are the, the rave right now. It's all about what they call MAP, which is Marketing Automation Platforms, and how to go ahead and create loops that will allow you to go ahead and get information or your story to people that show, have shown interest in your business beyond just sales intervention. These marketing loops become critical to what we like to refer to as warm calling environments, and um, they allow you to go ahead and start with some big campaigning messages, but then get specific about telling the difference. And at a point where people still like to receive email with their information, and then they can choose to opt in. To this point, a lot of companies uh, also have been adding webinars to this, this function because if it's a one-to-one -one meeting, it's too much commitment for that millennial or that new researcher. Uh, so a lot of times webinars are an excellent way just to go ahead and um, offer a way to view what you have to offer and what makes you different. So again, we're suggesting to you is to rethink that formula, you know, and ask that question of yourself. How many contacts do you have in your database and are they up to date? And uh, on that same level of rethinking your formula, continue to think about centralization and um, also talk about that this is truly a company asset. And so this is when you're looking to someday down the road possibly sell or merge your business, the ability to go ahead and speak to your customers and demonstrate that value to others that are wanting to acquire or purchase you becomes a, a really big deal. And it really relates highly to your enterprise value. So another um, point of view that we have is uh, you know, talking about what our model includes, which is we we kind of bridge the gap between marketing, sales tools, business development, client care, and training. And we believe in training because training is really important. Our industry has not a good onboarding programs for a lot of people. Usually it's a box of business cards and a sample book and away you go. Uh, what we're suggesting is that needs to be much more targeted. Um, another key component that we feel is that a lot of companies have business that they get from certain parts of an existing account, but have never put a strategic account plan together to identify the other users or channels inside that business and who the key influencers or uh, gatekeepers are. And, you know, there's a ton of tools that you can develop. Uh, we have a few that we, we utilize to talk about how to drive performance inside a sales team talking about weekly commitments, you know, start to measure things that we think are important, 
which the number one thing we like to measure in a business is the number of business presentations that you do in a month in a year and um, how that relates to uh, the relationship of converting them through that pipeline of prospect existing customers and face-to-face -face meetings so um, we also suggest that you take a look at your profit and loss on a selling ex on ex your selling expense and that's really how you're going to fund these changes moving forward and if you have that 80 20 rule that we see in most businesses you've got underperformers that may never make that threshold and you're continuing to invest in them we're suggesting rethink that formula take those funds move those towards marketing and the things we've outlined in this presentation and um, change your destiny so uh, you know how does this all relate to this total cost of sales and what's included is that a base salary a variable compensation and is there uh, marketing client care that you have allocated to your true total selling costs because it's necessary and I can tell you that the recruiters are busy right now because there's still a lot of people think that you know um, the salespeople they're, they're looking for very experienced salespeople that have zero training rethink that formula go ahead and consider training them um, to a new formula that you have and you've established and put in place um, some of the things that we recommend to uh, obtain sustainable growth are the following here so you know rethinking it leads to better retention and what you're gonna see here is that we believe it starts with your message and with your message it's de defining what makes you different in any presentation um, for any product and service uh, what's happening in that presentation and interview is they're trying to identify what you're offering and trying to put it into buckets that already exist so um, one of the key components here is trying to identify what is makes you different what are how you articulate that and then how to rethink that and deliver that in a different way you have to uh, go ahead and talk about your attributes you have to go ahead and build your company and you have to grow that reach so uh, set up your business for success and some of the things that we've covered in this presentation are just the beginnings of the right behaviors to go ahead and succeed so uh, can, to cover these you know our recommendation number two which would be restructure your selling expense put your money where you need it to be and where you get the most return uh, invest in marketing because marketing is really what is uh, moving it from a cold calling environment to a warm calling environment uh, you know start campaigning and manage marketing um, not via executives or by sales but by start campaigning a, a message that helps educate your clients to your difference uh, define the markets that you want to be uh, predominant in and that you have expertise in that's one of the things that we run across all the time is that there's people that want to grow into new markets but they haven't invested the time to go ahead and identify uh, understanding that market and how they can differentiate themselves um, and when you're going into a new marketplace do the research define the market and then hire to go ahead and meet those objectives we recommend hiring salespeople after you've already identified the market you've done your big data data mining you've identified which accounts if you added them would change and then hire the right person that would fit that market so all of these things you know kind of roll back up under uh, refining your value proposition to address your research and then uh, making sure that you are relevant for the markets that you wanted to go after um, centralize your data is another great recommendation and create a scoring program that is linked to some sort of nurturing message that you know um, prospects are getting a consistent message about you and don't underestimate the power of video video is overwhelmingly uh, Im impressive we recommend it as our favorite social media with YouTube and especially being in a visual industry I can't imagine every uh, graphic communication company not having a YouTube channel with a tour of their facility and examples of their work so that people can see it easily and not have to uh, dive through a lot of depth to get the answers. So uh, I wanted to let you make sure that you guys understand that we have a, a content marketing guide. It's available to you if you want to just uh, hit us up off of our website for some information. We're happy to talk about uh, getting that in front of you. 
and again, you know, HCS has over 30 years of experience in this marketplace. We can help you go ahead and build a toolbox that can really support your efforts to grow your business. Um, want to thank you for taking the time this morning. We had a lot of information to cover, and um, I want to uh, field it for any questions. So I'm also excited to uh, announce that you know we published our second book or second volume to A Way to Grow. It's called 2.0. It's also being uh, released through SGIA to its members. And it's a great tool, and we highly recommend that you obtain one of those. You can reach us at info at heartconsultingservices.com to purchase one. Um, we're very excited about the book. It outlines our process and allows us to uh, explain what we do and how we do it. Upcoming webinars for HCS are uh, program and project management training, uh, data, keywords, web intelligence, Salesforce integration, marketing automation and lead nurturing and calling service and appointment setting, and the power of video and send some HCS case studies followed up in December. You can connect with us at heartconsultingservices.com or info at heartconsultingservices. I thank you for your time. Um, this is Brian Hart with HCS um, thanking you again for participating in our webinar.